All right. So the last thing I want to talk about in this module, now that we've gone over the greenhouse effect and now that we've kind of overviewed seasons a little bit, is the results of the differences between length of day, the differences between incoming sunlight and how that all affects seasons to split earth up into three main climate zones. The three main climate zones are called tropical, temperate, and polar. Tropical, temperate, and polar. A tropical climate zone has plenty of direct sunlight year round and therefore has very little change from season to season. Temperate climate zones have plenty of direct sunlight in the summertime, not as much in the wintertime. So it's kind of a noticeable change. Polar, on the other hand, receives as much as a 24 hour day of sunlight during the summertime and as little as a zero hour day of sunlight in the wintertime. And as a result, polar regions are actually, they see a very extreme temperature variation. So if I were to give you, and I think I will on this module activity, if I were to give you just a little bit of an overview or a little bit of, um, if I were to give you a few different, um, a few different locations, and I were to give you their seasonal temperature profile, here's what you would notice. The tropical would basically be constant year round. It may have a few degrees of variation depending on um, what time of year it rains and so on, but really very, very small, very little change year round. In a temperate climate zone, you would see a noticeable change if this is winter, this is summer, and then over here is winter again. It would be cool in the winter, warm in the summer, and cool in the winter again. Now, when I say cool in the winter, I mean 20s and 30s. When I say warm in the summer, I mean 80s and 90s. Um, depending on where you live, if you live in the Bay Area, it might be 40s and 50s and then 70s and 80s. Um, but it's definitely, you're definitely gonna have two wardrobes throughout the year. You're definitely gonna notice the difference between winter and summer, but it's not really extreme. However, if you live in a polar region, you may see something as extreme as temperatures in the negatives. During the winter time. And the temperatures noticeably warmer during the summertime. So basically the further away you get from the equator, the bigger the difference becomes. The further away you get from the equator, the bigger the difference becomes. So if you're right near the equator, roughly between, um, roughly between the equator and 23 and a half degrees north or south, those are the tropics, you're in the tropical zone. Going a little bit further away, between 23 and a half and 65, or sorry, 67 and a half, degrees, you're in the temperate zone, and then anything beyond 67 and a half degrees is the polar zone. Now, how are these actually experiencing climate change, though? Well, if you live near the equator, you see very little change seasonally with temperatures. Polar regions, on the other hand, experience the most amount of change seasonally. This imbalance is what causes weather. Um, if you've ever wondered here in California, I'm assuming that you're watching this because you're attending one of my colleges in California. Um, if you're watching this from California, you probably know that, um, that we get most of our rainfall in the winter time. But have you ever wondered why? Well, one of the biggest reasons why is because the equator 
remains warm year round, so its temperature really doesn't change. The pole, however, is relatively mild in the summertime, so that difference between the pole and the equator is pretty small. That imbalance is what causes weather. Well, in the summertime, a small difference results in relatively calm weather. With the exception of hurricanes, that's something different. That's a different type of storm, not a kind of storm that we get here. Um, in the winter time, however, the equator is still nice and warm, but the pole is very, very cold. That creates a big difference in temperature, which creates a lot of weather. Blizzards, snowstorms, rainstorms, um, mid-latitude cyclones, all of those insane kind of things happen in the winter time because, because the difference in temperature is much more noticeable. However, as the earth continues to warm, it is actually believed that polar regions are actually going to see the bulk of that warming. This could actually throw off that imbalance and it could greatly influence the kind of weather we get. Um, one of the big hypotheses is that we're going to see a smaller temperature difference between the equator and the pole. And as a result, we're not gonna see as much interesting weather. Fewer rainstorms, fewer blizzards, and so on. Specifically in the temperate regions. But um, once again, just to kind of show what I'm talking about here, um, here are the average January temperatures around the world. If you notice the equator, relatively warm temperatures in the 70s and 80s. Up near the pole of the winter hemisphere, temperatures well below zero in interior Siberia, but lots of negatives up here. Now watch what happens as I transition to July. Specifically, Keep your eyes up here, and then look at the equator. That same region up here, I drew it a little bit to the right, there we go. That same region up here that was well below negative 50 is now above positive 50. That's a huge temperature change from winter to summer. Meanwhile, if you notice the equator, temperatures remain relatively constant. Temperatures remain relatively constant. Um, we're gonna talk more about this in a few weeks when we talk about how climate change affects the global circulation of the atmosphere. But just right now, know that um, as the earth continues to warm, what we're actually seeing is um, that warmth is actually going to be unevenly spread. And particularly our polar regions are gonna see the bulk of that warmth. That's going to lead to a lot more, um, or that's going to lead to different imbalances in our weather. So I think I already showed you the slide in the last video, but happy holidays from Australia. Um, that's it for this module. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, thank you for watching.